MV Augusta, an Italian motorcycle manufacturer that is known for its sport bikes and, let's face it, is also known for being expensive. And justifiably so, they make some of the most beautiful and most capable bikes on the planet. And just like Harley Davidson, they also make a statement about the sort of person you are. Let's be honest here, if you ride an MV, you're not poor, are you? The arrival of the middleweight triple cylinder engine a couple of years ago has made them significantly more affordable though. So once the engine had grown from 675cc to 800cc, we had this, the B3 800 naked with 125 horsepower. Lovely bike, good looking, really does its job well. But then, wow, we have this, the F3 Superbike with a full fat 140 horsepower motor. This thing absolutely rocks but that wasn't the end of it. And of course, there's this, the uniquely wonderful Dragster. 125 horsepower the engine makes in this version, although this, the RR, makes, like the Superbike, a full fat 140. And then from uniquely wonderful, we come to uniquely weird. This is the Rivali, a supermoto style bike that is, well, just plain weird. And now we've got this, MV Augusta's latest addition to its middleweight class, using all of the same ingredients, basically. And if you have a look at it, it looks like the Rivali, but with a couple of panniers. But actually, there's a lot more going on than just that. The chassis, for instance, uses the usual MV style of steel tubing and aluminium plates. But the geometry is a little less radical than it is on the Rivali. There's also a taller, adjustable screen and a wider, plusher seat. Tank size has been increased from a paltry 13 litres to a slightly less paltry 16 litres, so as long as you don't ride like a complete loon, you should get 200 k's between fill-ups. There's a funky new set of wheels, some fierce Brembo radial calipers and, because it's a Tourer, there's a set of panniers with a top box offered as an option. You'll notice too that these panniers actually have lights because they obstruct the bike's own brake lights, hence they actually need to be plugged in. They also feature an easy to use combination locking system and it has to be said, they're really not very big. The Stradale feels noticeably softer on the road than the Rivali with a better quality ride and it's a damn sight less nervous and twitchy too. With adjustable traction control and ABS, which can be turned off completely, there's a decent electronic safety net to help keep you safe. And there's a mix of riding modes that adjust a range of parameters to make the Stradale as aggressively sporting or as placidly touring as your mood desires. There's one thing about MV Augustas and over the last couple of years, some of the models, the fueling's been a little bit iffy, especially really low down, but I tell you what, they've upped their game so well now that it's, it's perfect, it's almost perfect. And to prove that, I'm just gonna slot her into sixth gear, back off a little bit, make sure nothing runs into the back of me while I'm now doing 41 kilometers an hour, full throttle, six gear. Listen to that. Perfectly smooth drive. Yeah, that's amazing. And it makes living with the bike so easy, so pleasurable. Quite weirdly, the Stradale feels every bit as fast as the Rivali. Even though at 115 horsepower, it's actually 10 down on its more radical cousin. Torque output has been beefed up a bit and it's available over a much wider range. So the ease with which you can get up to speed is probably what makes it feel quite so rapid. MV have also stepped up the game in terms of electronics. Now they've had this quick shifter mechanism around for a couple of years now, and very good it is too. Let me just demonstrate. Clutch hand, that's third gear. No backing off the throttle. Fourth gear, fifth gear, sixth gear. And the thing is, it works perfectly. Even, you know, even at low RPM, where it should be a bit, uh, it's as good as it is at high RPM. But the most astonishing thing, and it's almost worth the entry price on its own, is the downchain. So just, you back off, 
fifth, fourth, again, no clutch, third, second, and even down into first. There we go, into first. You can hear a little blip every time, so just go first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Let's go a little bit quicker now. That's fifth. Coming up to a turn, bit of a turn, back up, fourth, just got in, third, oh, it's fantastic, second, oh, brilliant, I think it's the best system I've used, it's better even, smoother than that one that I tested on the BMW S1000 the 2015 model, absolutely brilliant. The engineers at MV apparently refer to this as a light tourer, whatever one of those might be, but you can see what they're after because, I mean, those panniers, they're good for a toothbrush and a couple of sandwiches. The seat is wider and more plusher, and there's that screen which differentiates it from a Rivali, but uh, let's be honest, you're not going to be taking your missus on the back and doing a two-week holiday. This is a, a day tourer or maybe a long weekend at best. In that respect, it's absolutely perfect. In fact, it would probably make a really good commuter. Whip the panniers off, and basically this is a very relaxed Rivali. There's no way to fault it. Well, actually there is. I do have one or two little niggling criticisms. The first of which is this seat. I mean, for an hour or so at a time, it really is nice, padded, wide, quite comfortable, but when you're in the saddle for a longer period of time, during a whole day, you know what it's like. You like to shift around, move up and down, because bits and pieces of you get numb. But what is this? I mean, it's, it looks good, and that's probably what it's designed for, but it's hard. So every time you try and shift back, even a little bit, it's just jamming into the base of your spine. Deeply uncomfortable, deeply, deeply silly idea. And the other thing that annoys me, they've been around a bit now, uh, the instrument display, digital, lovely, tells you all the information you need, but you've got to have the eyesight of a hawk to be able to see any of it. So a lot of the time, no use at all whatsoever. But, and they are two tiny little niggles. I almost feel guilty for, for even pointing them out. But otherwise, you know what this is? This is a Rivali made for the road. It's still exciting, but it's more reassuring, more confidence inspiring, and slightly more practical. It's brilliant, I love it. So you obviously like the bike, but there are some niggly bits. What is your heart rating? It's a good question. I would know. I would have said four, I think, but because of the <laughs> niggly... Every bike bike. can be four. Yeah, yes, I know. Four. Okay, three this and a half. This is the four no, no, it's, it's a three and a half because the riding position is too compromised. And it's still quite expensive, it's 159,900 Rand, but Envy Augusta, so that's, you know, it's what you sort of expect. By the way, you do get three years of free service plan with that. So I could move it up to a four, but I'm not going to. Three and a half right rating is what it gets. Can we just uh, discuss those panniers? Because they're, they're not big, are they? No, I tried to put a laptop in to come here, actually, and it uh, wouldn't fit. So then I tried <laughs> to put my iPad in there, as, and that wouldn't fit either. <laughs> Get your phone in there, though, and a couple of sandwiches. Can we touch on the, the fueling? Because MVs, these triples have been unknown for not the best fueling yeah, well, in the past. Yeah, well, as you saw, I mean, I did that uh, six-gear roll on. It's absolutely perfect. And with electronics being what they are these days, as you know, they can now download all that information. So now every bike in the MV Augusta range is perfect. Not a moment too soon, because they were a little bit rough in the past. Mm. Anything else you want to pick my brain about? Mm, no, no, too late. OK, we'll be back again <laughs> next week, because I've had enough now. <laughs>